Welcome back to Power Trading Radio Live and your host, Merlin Rothfeld, with today's special guest. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Power Trading Radio. Merlin Rothfeld into you for your weekend edition. And uh, I've got a very special guest joining us today. John O'Donnell is not with us. And uh, I know that the weekend edition lovers want their dose of macroeconomics. And who better to help us out with that than the director of economic research over at Rarecoin Wholesalers? We've got Paul Busby on the line with us. Paul, how are you doing? Good, Merlin. Good to talk to you again. Good to have you here. I, well, I was kind of hoping you'd be in studio, but I understand we've got the you got here so far down the road there. It's a little bit uh, difficult to get here all the time, but definitely happy to have you on the program. Um, look, I, I think one of the major things that we let's start off our discussion is talking macro politics. And I was making a comment earlier that I really felt that today we would see these markets sell off simply because uncertainty around the world. And I think one of the major variables, wild cards, if you will is this whole issue with Syria. So I'd love to get your thoughts on Syria and maybe its market impacts. Okay, one thing on Syria that I noticed is this isn't the first time they've gassed someone. You know, they did it eight <laughs> months ago, and the Obama administration just swept on the carpet and moved on. So my first thought was, why are they making this time an issue when they didn't the last time? So I knew it wasn't about, you know, helping people or something like that. So I was trying to figure out what was behind it. And then when I went just started thinking about the the dollar and the markets started making sense. Uh, basically, um, Obama and the administration do not like the sequester. Mm -hmm. They don't like all the cuts it's putting to play because this is money that they would be able to funnel, it, funnel to all the different markets they wanted. Um, so basically, how can they get rid of the sequester? Well, if they go to war, uh, even a short-term missile strike like, um, you know, three days a week uh, in Syria, they would use anywhere from half a billion to like $1.5 billion worth of hardware that they need to replace. Mm -hmm. There's no money to replace it because of the sequester cuts. This would put pressure on Congress to have to relent on the sequester cuts if the cuts go away. Dollar goes down, gold goes up, and probably the markets go up a little. Mm. All right. Um, so uh, that was the first reason, and also his timing. He could have done this two weeks ago. He could have done this a week ago. He could do this today, but he's still holding off. Why? Well, Congress isn't going to finish their decision until the end of the week, and that gets us into next week, which is the Federal Reserve meeting, Tuesday and Wednesday, 17th and 18th. If he times it then, this could put pressure on the Fed not to do the tapering this meeting, but wait until the October meeting. Same thing. It's all about dollars. If they don't do the tapering, let's say they uh, – don't do anything uh, where they were going to cut $20 billion. Well, that's $20 billion more the government has to spend uh, if they hadn't done the sequester. Mm. Okay? So uh, I'm thinking this really is more about um, politics. It's more about um, putting pressure on Congress to open up money for the administration to be able to use for different things. Yeah, I was going to say, it almost sounds like a, a bad chess game where you know that you're going to make one move to sacrifice a, a smaller piece, and, and everybody knows that, uh, but the benefit for the side that's making that move is obviously a much greater impact. And, you know, it's, it's kind of depressing because from an altruistic standpoint, I would love to think that if we are going to go to war, if we are going to go and have an attack and kill people, there's a purpose behind it, and my purpose would be, you know, faith and freedom and liberty as opposed to, well, we can get around the sequester and we can convince America to give us more money, but we need an action. So let's start a war, and why not pick some? Who's in the news? Syria sounds good. Didn't they gas somebody recently? You know, it's, it's sad, isn't it? It is. Now, here, here's a good thing. I'll give you a historical note. Uh -oh. The type of campaign that uh, Obama and his people are, are proposing, you got to remember about half his administration are people from the Clinton administration. And it's basically the same tactics that Clinton used in the 90s. He did two missile strikes like this, punitive missile strikes in the 90s. Both times, gold spiked about uh, one time it was like 80 bucks uh, an ounce. The other time it was like 100 bucks an ounce. Mm -hmm. But it only lasted like three or four days, and then it went right back down to where it had been. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if that's what's going to happen this time. Uh, if there is a missile strike, I know gold's going to go up. Right. And I don't know how high it will go up, um, and I don't know how long it will, but looking at past historical on, on this type of strike before, it didn't last long. 
Well, and, and TJ, go ahead and bring up the chart of gold here since we'll probably talk a bit about gold today. Um, you know, we've seen off those lows that happened in, in late June, early July, mm -hmm. a, a pretty significant move. We can actually map it out to today's close. It's about 16%. Um, you know, if, if we did end up rallying up another, let's say, 100 bucks an ounce, that would put us right in an area where I would actually think it would stop, which is around that uh, 1420 mark. Um, it, so you think a strike on, on Syria would... would catapult not catapult but vault gold up a bit more up here yeah but i think it would be very short very temporary vault mm -hmm. okay basically there's a lot of things that have been happening here that have been putting pressure on uh, commodities and uh to go up um uh it's also to uh, foreign currencies uh, the dollar to go down foreign currencies to go up um, there are things going on in Europe and China that are pushing their economies up temporarily. It's like a whole bunch of issues, about five or six issues, just all came in the middle of August through now to, to put us where we are now. But almost all of these issues um, basically go away at the end of September. Yeah. And the first one's Syria. Uh, the second one is the Fed meeting on September 17th and 18th. Uh, the third one is the debt ceiling limit. That'll get resolved by the end of the month. Uh, yeah. the Republicans oh. don't want to have that battle. Wait, wait, hold on. You said resolved. Come on now. You mean it's going to get kicked down the road again? Absolutely. Okay. The, okay. the Republicans do not want this battle until the elections of 2014. Yeah. No, I, I got they'll, it. They'll lose in the the in the uh, the press will support Obama, and they'll lose in the public opinion. They don't want this battle now. They want this battle next year. Yeah, tell you what, let's. Uh, th that's a whole other segment. So let's um, let's take a quick break. We come back. I want to talk about those two things. We've got the Fed meeting coming up next week, which obviously, as everybody knows, is going to be probably the major announcement. It's going to be if they taper, I think it's more a question of how much. We'll talk to the uh, Director of Economic Research over at RareCoin Wholesalers. Paul Busby will be back to help us get some opinions on that. I'm sure you guys all have opinions as well. So if you would like to comment... Power Blast out of PowerTradingRadio.com. And while you're there, enter our gold coin contest. We're giving away a free gold coin every Friday on the show. I got another announcement to announce a winner coming up a little bit later on. We'll be right back after a short break. You've been listening to Power Trading Radio live, fueled by Online Trading Academy. To learn more, visit us online at PowerTradingRadio.com. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Power Training Radio. I'm Merlin Rothfeld with you for your weekend edition. My guest today coming to us from Southern California via the telephone. We've got Paul Busby, who's the Director of Economic Research over at Rare Coin Wholesalers. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we progress. But, Paul, I wanted to uh, go back to – you made a couple comments. I guess this segment will focus on two things. Number one is the Fed, and then we'll dive into the debt ceiling. Obviously, the entire world at this point – and I think it's a safe assessment to say the entire world – is looking at the bald beauty Bernanke and wondering what he's going to do with regards to tapering. We had good economic numbers today. Uh, unemployment numbers looked relatively positive. We had a couple positive factors. Do you think the tapering is going to happen starting this next week, or is it going to be kicked down the road again? Um, my feeling is, um, yes, I think we're going to see a token tapering. <laughs> But a token tapering doesn't matter. Any tapering matters. The moment they start tapering, uh, the, Fed, the, the regular banks will raise their interest rates, lower their standards, rates go up, people, money starts flying out of bonds, treasuries, mm -hmm. and commodities. We've already seen what, in the last, what, two months, over $20 billion leave bonds and treasuries. Right. Um, just at the hint of the, all of this. Uh, but just the small amount of tapering, and you'll see a big movement in the rates. You'll see a big movement on lowering standards. And both of these are good for the economy. Uh, they're going to put some real volatility in the markets, because what's going to happen is, you're going to see the Dow, the S&P, and the uh, NASDAQ will all take some pretty good hits mm -hmm. when they uh, start tapering. But the thing is, they're temporary. It's just money shifting. It's money moving out of commodities, bonds, and treasuries. It has nowhere else to go in the world. It's going to go right back into the markets, just into like companies that actually produce something. So it isn't the markets losing money. It's the market shifting money over a couple-week period. Mm -hmm. You'll see the big drop, but guess what? Almost all the, the markets will cover all of that, if not more, within a couple weeks. 
because the money has nowhere else to go. Yeah, well, it'll, it'll like, tip, like typical, it'll flow into wherever they think they can get the greatest, greatest return on that capital and, and, and make the most money with it. Um, you mentioned token tapering. I'm just curious, what do you think? We're talking $5 billion a month cutback, $10 billion, $20 billion? Um, believe it or not, uh, a lot of people think $20 billion is a lot. $20 billion is small. $10 billion is token. I don't see them doing 5 They'll do 10 or 20 I'm, I'm with you on 10 I was thinking 5 earlier because I feel like, why would they rush it? But I think uh, that they'll probably do 10 and anything greater than that, guys, I, I think that you, you spelled it out there. I think the real opportunity um, is going to be in several different areas. Number one, we could look at the major equity indexes, so S&P, NASDAQ, uh, Dow, probably seeing some pretty big haircuts. What about commodities with a, the, a stall in tapering, a step back in what – or sorry, not a stall in tapering, but an increase in tapering, a stall in uh, the amount of pur- purchasing that they're making. What is that going to do to the commodity markets? Well, you, I don't know if you saw, but uh, this August was the lowest amount of physical gold sold since the United States started selling gold back in 1976. I did not know that. Wow. Um, normally, we do about 36,000 tons in August, uh, 36,000 ounces in August. Uh, as of three days ago, we were up to 3,000 ounces. That's one-tenth. Yes. Wow. And it's because everybody knows the taper's coming. Nobody's buying it physical. The only people buying it are the hedge funds, the, 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 the big guys. Mm-hmm. They're the ones moving it around. But uh, in our industry, you know, we follow all the resellers and everything. They're selling nothing. Yeah. Nobody's buying, okay? And it's just everyone's in that wait-and-see thing. Nobody's selling either. Mm-hmm. Uh, my thing is, man, when the Fed starts tapering and those rates start going up, Dollar starts going through the roof, and gold and silver start tanking. Uh, if they do a missile strike, good opportunity to sell on a high. Yeah, interesting. Well, it, it is that chess game. You know, I have a question that just came in from Danny, one of our regular listeners up in Toronto, and I think you kind of answered it, but we'll, we'll try it again. Uh, he says, if tapering starts, are, you said increased rates. Are we going to see that in the form of banks increasing their CD rates, which are like zero right now? In time, not initially. Uh, you, uh, it, it basically, you'll um, j- just uh, mortgage loans, you'll see those mm-hmm. moving. Sure. Um, and this is good. Um, uh, those mortgage rates going up a little. Everyone is like, oh, my God, a 5% loan mortgage. Well, that was five years ago. 6% was considered good. Right. Uh, when those rates go up, 10 times more P- and the banks, remember, lower their standards. Mm-hmm. This is the key thing. 10 times more people will be able to qualify for a mortgage. They have no problems paying another 1%. They can finally buy a home. Yeah. And also about 10 times more private businesses will be able to qualify to get a loan when they lower those standards. Um, When they raise those rates, the banks then can actually make a profit lending money, so they'll take more risk and lend more money out to people. What U.S. banks are sitting on, like $11 trillion, and uh, basically their rates or their standards are so high, it's almost impossible to qualify. Mm -hmm. As I said, this is us returning back to a normal monetary policy. Uh, The Fed getting out of our way, getting out of the private sector's way, is the best thing that can happen to the U.S. long term. Well, it's a, yeah, I was going to say it almost sounds Short like term. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it, it's like just it's, in this case, it's kind of funny you mentioned that. It, it's it's that old analogy of, you know, if you got a Band-Aid, the best thing to do is just rip that son of a, off there as fast as you can. It seems to me like what's happening is we've got a big Band-Aid on. It's a massive, you know, as John would call it, the giant sucking chest wound. We've got a bandage on it, and we're just slowly pulling it where each hair follicle is catching, and it's like a pain. Just rip the damn thing off, people. Let's get past it. Um Let's take a quick break here, Paul. When we come back, I want to talk debt ceiling, and then let's jump into China. We've seen some interesting interesting things happen from China's stability with regards to economic numbers, and then we'll talk about something that might not be impacted by some of these volatile markets, which is rare coins. Obviously, we've got Paul Busby, who's the Director of Economic Research over at Rare Coin Wholesalers. If you have questions for us, Power Blast at PowerTradingRadio.com. Don't forget your go- get your gold coin bids in. We're giving one away today on PowerTradingRadio.com. We'll be right back living in your house or in, a, in an apartment somewhere trying to figure it out, or somebody who's an active trader trying to figure out how to capitalize on this, Bernanke and his crew next week will be the ones who really dictate major market moves. Now, the other element that we didn't get to was the debt ceiling. It's like the, the horrible uncle that you hate so much, yet he shows up about every holiday, which is once every few months, and rains on your parade. Now, we've got this ugly debt ceiling number coming up again 
you mentioned at the top of the program, Syria and other factors, um, you know, might be causing a sleight of hand here, a distraction, so we don't focus on them. What is the deal with the debt ceiling? Should it be something we were worried about, or is it just going to be passe again and show up in December? Um, actually, the debt ceiling limit, um, the Republicans don't want to have this fight now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to get, it has to be resolved by October 10th. They'll probably have it resolved before the end of September because the, the Republicans don't want to have anything to do with this right now. They're not going to use it to try and defund um, Obamacare uh, because they would lose and the media would uh, side with Obama on who to blame for shutting down the government. So they, won't, they don't want to have this fight right now. So this one's going to just get passed on. Now, what people don't realize is the sequester cuts are, are I remember, only – partial went into play this year, and our uh, debt going up slowed dramatically. Mm -hmm. The big cuts from the sequester hit next year. Um, uh, uh, the Republicans know this. They want to have this battle next year when they can actually show big cuts to spending and to the, and to the debt, um, and the economy is going to be doing great while it's happening, mm -hmm. and they want to do that just before the election in 2014. So, no, they're not going to deal with that. This is going to get put off and get put off very quietly and very quickly. Let's not make America a better place because if we do it today – we won't get elected next time. So let's hold off on improving the way of lives for us Americans so that we can do it and benefit from it. You capitalistic sons of – never mind. Um, I'm going to get myself into trouble here. The good thing is we're early on the internet now so I can say bad things. But um, all right. So in summary so far, we've talked about uh, the strikes on Syria, potential strikes on Syria. And uh, Paul Busby, our guest today, was saying, look, if it does happen, you might get a short-term spike in gold, which is obviously great for us short-term speculators and traders. Um, there might be a longer term move to the downside here, especially if we um, have the tapering effects. So we've got two major issues. Let's talk about global growth. This has been something that's rather interesting. Um, I had a guest on the program, Ilya Spivak from uh, FXCM, and he was talking about China's growth and how, you know, if China's numbers come out really good, that's going to be great for the Aussie dollar. Uh, I felt the same way, made a great trade on the Aussie dollar based off the, uh, the economic numbers from China. They're looking better and better and better. Is this, is this an actual recovery, getting back on the track, or is this just artificial numbers like we see from China all the time? Uh, this is it's not an artificial number. It is a prop up from Europe. Mm. Uh, what happened here is in January, Europe printed a ton of euros to uh, and then to bail out basically uh, Spain, Portugal, Italy, the three big broke countries. They're the important ones, and three little ones: Ireland, um, Cyprus, and Greece. Uh, but they basically only printed enough money to get them through the end of September. Sure. Uh, when we get the end of September, they got to print more money to bail those countries out because they haven't fixed the problem. There are no austerity programs going on. They haven't fixed anything. They're in the exact same trouble they were back in January. Mm -hmm. But all that money they printed gave them an artificial boost. Uh, China, most people don't know this, they export uh, a heck of a lot more to Europe than they do to the United States. Uh, China exports about 40% of its GDP. About 5% comes to the U.S., about 25% goes to Europe. Wow. Europe is tied, to, uh, China and Europe are tied at the hip, not the U.S., okay? All that money that Europe printed also boosted China's economy. Mm -hmm. That's why those are real numbers coming out of China, because that really happened because of all the euros that were printed in Europe. But it's short-lived. That money runs out. Now, France has been the one buying up a lot of these bonds of treasuries. They're tapped out. They need mm -hmm. Germany to step up. Germans don't want to take on the debt of those uh, broke countries. Sure. The uh, chancellor of uh, Germany is up for re-election in September. Germany's been bringing its gold in from around the world, so it have to, if it has to get off the euro and go back to the Deutschmark, they got something to back it with. <laughs> um, it's getting dicey over there. This is no, this is a temporary fix. It will be going away. Good. I like to hear that because as a trader, that means volatility, which means I can trade it actively. Let's <laughs> let's shift focus to. I would actually watch in your portfolio over there uh, that you guys have on your your website, uh, watching rare coins. I don't see the same amount of volatility, and, and if this market does go to hell in a handbasket, which it, I think it could happen at some point, um, you know, we had a show with you. I think it was actually TJ was telling me earlier. I think it was March 28th of this year. You came on to a great show with myself uh, regarding normal coins, bullion, rare coins, and it seems to me that from somebody who um, is looking to kind of get away from a lot of the volatility, rare coins might be a safe bet, but you got to know what you're doing, just like everything else. 
Right. Uh, rare coins are, pretty, uh, are a lot simpler than most people realize. Um, about 95% of numismatic U.S. coins pre-1932 are common. You don't want to be dealing with the common ones. About 5% of them are rare. Uh, the rare coins have been doing about 12 to 16 percent annually over time. I mean, they might be flat for a couple of years, then go up. It's over time mm -hmm. they do that. Uh, over the last hundred, they've been doing that for 40 years. Uh, over the last hundred years, they've done 10 to 15 percent. That includes the Great Depression. The trick with rare coins is you got to buy the right coin and mm -hmm. verify it. Yep. You got to buy it at the right price. Uh, verify it, and you got to have an exit strategy down the road. Uh, so if you already in the market and understand how things work, well, that's easy. If not, you got to make sure you hook up with a good company that's going to work with you over time to build up your portfolio. Uh, rarities have a lot of advantages. One, they're non-reportable items. No 1099s, no social security numbers. Uh, two, they're considered real property like real estate, so you can do 1031 exchanges between one rare coin and another rare coin. Uh, and they're great for estate planning uh, to pass from one generation to the other. So if you're looking for uh, low risk, if you're looking for wealth preservation, decent profits, and estate planning, and you want something that's not tied to all this volatility. Remember, rare coins don't care if the dollar's up or down, mm -hmm. precious metals are up or down. doesn't matter if Obama's in or Christie's in. doesn't matter if China's up or down. All of these things mean nothing to rare coins. 70% right. uh, of the people who buy rare coins are very wealthy people. The other 30% are in the industry, and uh, wealthy people learned a long time ago, you have three tangible assets. You have real estate, tank in most places, commodities you can't control, and lastly, rarities. These mm -hmm. things basically outperform stocks, bonds, CDs, gold, silver, hands down mm -hmm. over time. Right. And that time could be three years, five years, ten years. So it is a long-term investment. Well, I'll tell you what. If you guys want to know more information, go to rarecoinwholesalers.com. There's actually a tab there that says resources. There's a ton of great information, and there's an, an actually a really good article that I would recommend you guys read. I've actually got it right here in front of me. It's called The End of Quantitative Easing by Dr. Scott Sumner, a very uh, good article out there as well. There's a ton of free information. Paul, thank you so much for coming on the program. I, I know it was short notice. I, I really appreciate you coming on today. Anytime, Merlin. You have a fantastic weekend, everybody. That was Paul Busby. He's the Director of Economic Research over at Rare Coin Wholesalers. Again, if you want to know more about coins and investing and even get some great macroeconomic articles, go to rarecoinwholesalers.com. Some great stuff out there. All right.